Hey guys, it's your friend Todd from Lowbrow Customs here again. We got a new little project going on here. We got this 2017 Dyna Lowrider S. I know it's not a chopper, but we're still gonna soup it up with some of our cool parts. And we're gonna show you a couple of new things here that we haven't done before. In 2008, the baggers started to get fly-by-wire. Oh look, where's the throttle cables? Not there. I'm not really sure what year the Dynas went to it, but this bike has what they call throttle-by-wire or fly-by-wire. So what it is is it has a piece of wire going through the handlebar to the ECM that tells it what the throttle position needs to be. And that's how it works. It doesn't have any cables. Well, it's kind of cool that you don't have cables hanging off your bars, but if you want to change your bars, it makes it a little bit more complicated. So we're going to show you how that, what's inside the end of the bar and how all this stuff works. And we're going to be putting a new set of handlebars on. We're also going to be doing a set of risers. And since we're changing bars and risers, we're going to talk about, wow, now none of my other stuff's long enough to get where it needs to be. So we're going to probably be doing a brake line and we're going to do a clutch cable. And this is par for the course. You know, a lot of people think they're just going to slap those new bars on their bike, but what they don't take into account is the fact that you got a clutch cable, you got wiring for the switches, and you have a brake line and throttle cables or fly-by-wire. So if you go too tall on your bars and this stuff won't reach, you're going to be putting new stuff on there. So I, I very, very frequently get these questions in my email pretty much daily. Hey, will these bars fit on my bike? I can't predict what bar will fit on every single model of Harley ever built. And so the easiest way to figure it out that I recommend my cut to my customers pretty much on a daily basis is to, if you're looking at handlebars on our website, I'm guessing that 99.9% .9 of all of our bars will have a dimensional drawing in the additional pictures. You'll need to click on it and you'll need to look for it, but it's there and it's going to show you what your width is what your height is, what your middle part is usually, and what your pullback is. And uh, those bars really aren't that great to describe pullback, but I can sh I'll grab another different set of bars and I'll show you the best way to check pullback. I'm gonna show you height, width, and pullback on this stock set of Harley bars that came off some other bike we were working on around here. Obviously, width is a super easy one. I know it's kind of messy here. Don't worry about it, it'll be all right. With simply going from one side to the other, bada bing, we got about 27 inches, give or take. That's close enough for checking things. Okay. The height is going to be, some, some places do it from the middle of here to the middle of here. I generally do it from top to bottom. And so we'll get ready for our pullback and do our height and pullback at the same time. So here's going to be our height on this particular bar is I measure from there to there. So we have about four inches, and I'm sorry I said height, I meant to say rise. That's how tall this bar is from where it's attached to the motorcycle, approximately four inches. Now, for pullback, I think the most proper way to do it is bar up against the wall, so it's flat. And then, and then I measure from the wall to there and I'm seeing six inches. So this bar has approximately six inches of pullback. Never, not every website, not every bar maker, not everyone's gonna do it exactly the same way I just did it, but this is gonna give you a good idea if you're trying to figure it out on your motorcycle, which bars we sell that you're gonna change to. Maybe you're going from chrome to black, maybe you're going for a different bend, a different style, whatever the case may be. If you wanna keep your stock cables, Measure what you have, go to the website, take a look at our bars. One other thing to pay attention to, if you do have throttle by wire, fly by wire, whatever you're gonna call it, the end of your handlebar is gonna look completely different from a bar with throttle cables. This is stock, just plain end, nothing going on there. This is fly by wire. Look at that, it looks like a castle. And you'll see when we take it apart, there's a little plastic piece that push is into these notches and then it has a gear drive and when you slide the grip over the bar the gear drive on the unit that goes in the bar 
meshes with the inside of the grip and when you go like this, it turns that gear drive which sends a signal down the wires. And the other thing about the fly-by-wire bar, you gotta have a place for those wires to exit. So stock bar, nothing on the end, no hole in the middle. Those holes are for stock clips. We're gonna cover up this beautiful black gas tank with this awesome tank protector here that we have and an old beach towel. You gotta protect your paint. Get that silly thing out of the way. And also in preparation for the job, we removed a couple other pieces and parts. There was a silly little fairing here and we took the headlight off so we can get to the wires and we took the fender off. And I'll tell you why we took the fender off because of the brake fluid. We're gonna be changing the brake line. We're gonna take all this discombobulate everything and I'll give you a little bit of Harley trivia here. You know, y'all know I used to work at some silly Harley dealer before I came here. And back in the day, Harley Davidson's all used dot three. Well, if you know anything about brake fluid, you maybe you got an old car. You spill some dot three on painted surface, you know what happens? Hmm, pretty soon that dot three is acting like aircraft paint remover. And now you got a messed up paint job because you didn't pay attention or, or take your time and protect things. Well, then Harley switched to dot five. Oh, things were grand and wonderful then. You could spill brake fluid everywhere and it wouldn't harm a darn thing. Well, then one day Harley woke up and said, you know what? We can save some money if we switch to dot four. Well, guess what? Dot four is just like dot three. It'll eat your paint off. So protect your painted surfaces when you're messing with this stupid brake fluid that Harley's saving money on when they could have just left it well enough alone. Let's get started. We'll take these silly mirrors off. I see it looks like we have a new set of mirrors here. So let's get those off. We're just going to take those off. Just completely take them off the bike. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this free while it's still attached before I loosen anything. But then I'm going to just snug it back up so it won't leak because it will be much easier to remove it if I crack it free now than if I take it off the bike. And now I'm wrestling with the master cylinder in one hand and the wrench in the other hand. So let's break that free and then just snug it back up. Okay, now that'll come loose easily when we get to that point of the game. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the controls off, T27, and my favorite nut driver that you may have seen me use in some other videos here around town. Love my nut driver. T27. Once again, when we get these parts off, we got to be careful again that we don't bang things into other things because things don't like to be banged together unless they're tin cans. And we're just going to, you know what? We got a couple of clips on the frame. We'll go ahead and pop those off in preparation for taking our clutch cable completely off the bike and we can also oh uh, you know what let's just keep moving forward on this one we're going to go ahead and de-adjust that take this clip off and pull this cable right off of here we've been over this one before you got your adjuster here Seven six. I mean a half inch and a nine sixteenths. Thought I broke that free. Oh, I did. You're gonna spin that one towards the. This is fixed. That's not. And then you're gonna turn this down, and that's going to totally slacken the clutch cable. Oh, there she goes. Pin out, then you're going to pull your cable out this way, through the slot, lever off, plastic dealio out, done, there she is. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the master cylinder off. I don't want to just leave this hanging here, so I think I'll go ahead and remove this uh, clamp. All right, let's just go for a 25. That's got to be the one. 
and that's going to have to come off anyway. So again, careful to hold your clamp so it doesn't fall off. It's very easy to take one screw out and then hold it with your hand to take the second one out. Don't want anything falling down while we're doing it. And there we go. Oh, we got a little plastic clip there. We'll take that off. Pretty cool just hanging that baby down there like that. Not a problem. That's not a problem. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now, in order to complete the mission of taking the handlebars off the bike, we are going to have to unplug all of these wires. Pretty stoked about that. Every single wire here is going to get unplugged. And then we should be able to just take the top clamps off and take the bars off the bike with everything dangling and hanging. Now, on a Dyna, they've been doing this for quite some time, except for now the new bikes aren't Dynas anymore, they're soft tails, but not really. I guess they just call them that. But at any rate, we're going to have a little window on the frame here. We'll get a close up. You're going to have a rubber chingadinga that you're going to just yank right out of the window. And then you're going to pull the wires out to find the plugs and unplug these things. Now, then we're gonna find out, it's been a long, I haven't worked on any really super modern bikes like this uh, because I've been working here at Lowbrow for, it'll be 10 years this month. Woo! So, 2017, I was already working here, so I have no idea what the plugs are gonna look like, but back in the good old days when you did this job, you had to take all the plugs completely apart because they wouldn't fit through this hole in the triple tree. So let's see what we got going on here in 2017. Here's our window, but I'll be kind of surprised if Harley changed something to make this work a little bit more user friendly. And I'm just lightly poking at this with that screwdriver to get it started there. I'm not gonna pry the whole darn thing out with a screwdriver. Once again, this headlight wire is kind of pulling on, the, on this rubber piece, but you're just gonna yank this whole thing out of here like so, bada bing. There she is. There's your little window plug thingy. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna see how far the wires go in here and where the plugs are located. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, we'll move this out of the way because it's kind of right in the middle of the road there, Harley. And there comes the other side. Oh, what the hell? Did the previous owner modify that because he didn't like the way it fit? Huh, interesting. All right, let's be a little more careful on this side because we don't want to unplug anything else that we can't get to. Oh, there goes another one. That's not plugged into anything. Oh, there's one of them gigantic plugs. Okay, that's for the dash. Let's stuff everything in here, Harley. <laughs> Six miles of wire later. Okay, something else going on here. We got some more wires. Seriously, it's like spaghetti in here. It's like a bowl of noodles. All right, well, we didn't want to bore you with all pulling these wires all out of the frame, but we got all of them pulled out. And as you can see, we got this gigantic mess going on here. Well, the one positive thing we got going on is, since I used to work at the Harley dealer, we have made the plugs on the wires for this job small enough to fit through the tree instead of so gigantic that you'd spend the next 20 minutes removing every single wire from every single plug. So these become unplugged very easily. I left a couple plugged in for you guys. 
like here's one right here, there's just a little tab. You push the tab. Oh yeah, so much for E and it comes right apart. See this little tab here is what releases it. And here's the turn signal one. You push that little tab and boom, it releases it. There's two little clips there. We'll plug it back in, we'll release it again. And that's plugged in. And once again, when we go back together, I'll show you. Anytime I'm working with any kind of plugs or wires, when I'm plugging them in, I'm pulling on them. Do they stay plugged in? Because we're going to shove all this junk back inside those holes in the frame. So now we have everything unplugged that goes to the switch housings and the flyby wire and every freaking thing else in the world going on here. Look at that, boy. We got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So we're at the point now where we can go ahead and remove the handlebars and take them over to the workbench to work on switching these controls and wires and all this mess onto the new bar. So let's go ahead and get the bars off. Much easier to loosen riser bolts with the bars attached. They must have some pretty good, oh, there we go. Thought we had some, I was gonna say, they probably had some good knurling going on because these things have not moved a, even a little bit since we started. Once again, parts protection. Okay. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna have to do this about one wire at a frickin' time probably because they're all obviously not gonna fit through that hole at the same time. Once we start getting some out, it'll go a little easier. There's one, here comes another one. That one had two, there we go, not so difficult. And the last one, there we go, all the wires are removed. We'll take our handlebars to the workbench to work on them. All right, we got these plenty loose, we can just do this by hand now. And once again, be even careful not to drop these gigantic risers on the motorcycle. Bada bing. So let's go ahead and take this side off, T25, hmm. what do we got here, cruise control, wow, has been a long time since I worked on a Harley, a new Harley, hmm. interesting, I have never even taken one of these apart before. Hey, look at that. So these two wires are gonna to have to go through this hole and come out here, like a so. So far, it's going pretty good. Sometimes it's easy to pull them both at the same time and sometimes it's easier to pull one at a time. That was pretty simple, boy. Back in the day, when I worked at the shop, we used to play hide the wire. We were drilling holes in the dimples and fricking attaching wires so they used to pull them out the middle, blah, blah, blah. So now we'll take this off. So again with our T25. Okay, now let's go ahead and just start this one a little bit, give us some room to work and we're gonna pull this off. And there's what I was talking about earlier. Here's your fly-by-wire. Here's the teeth I was talking about. If you could see down inside here, which maybe we can, we'll try. You can see that there's a gear in the bottom of that grip. That mates with this. Look at that. Look at that. Modern miracle. And there's your, so this is connected to those wires. So I would assume because of the way this has three wires, we're gonna have to pull all these at the same time, but I'm not real sure because I've never done this job before on this model. So let's, uh, let's give it a whirl and see what's going on here. All right, since we've got so many wires here, I'm just gonna give her a little, just a little squirt of luber duber. 
And I've, I started pushing it. And there's that one, which I think, you know what, it might be easier if we just pull this one out first. We'll have more room for the other two. Let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, we'll keep going. And I didn't pull that one all the way out because I could feel there was some resistance. So I didn't want to booger up the plug. And with stuff like this, you got to have a little bit of patience. And it seems like it's not working so good now, so I'm going to start pulling the throttle out too at the same time. Yeah, it's getting stuck in there. Maybe I didn't do that right, but we'll get her out of there. Don't worry. Oh, there she goes. So now we've got everything pulled except for the throttle. And see how this is this big giant metal chingadinga. And there we go. And oh boy, oh, the O-ring came out the end there. I would assume that's sealing to the inside of this to keep corrosion at bay. And there you have it. Old bar stripped clean, ready to put the stuff in the new bar. I basically got the first ones for this, the throttle by wire, past the hole, and then I added the next one and started pushing it in. And then I added the last one a little bit further back. And right now they're all starting to come out the middle and let's just hope that we get them all out of here and nothing goes wrong. Oh, look at that. Once we get a couple of these out of here, we'll be fine. Oh, here goes a pick, that should work. Carefully. And there's our last one. Looks like we got it, gang. Okay, now. I think we're due for a tad bit more luber duber. Oh boy. And be careful of this edge here uh, that you don't skin it. Oh boy, look at that. Look at her go. Look at her go. Oh boy. I'm just trying to get these wires here orientated. And, and I, since I've never done this one before, I had to kind of look at it and I can see that the turn signal wire gets orientated in this bottom slot here. Get the other one in here, okay? So now it's time to get this one in the rest of the way. And since there was that O-ring, let's give her just a, just a every little bit of stuff there. Oh yeah. And there's that. Okay. Now this hangs down. And this is gonna go on the top with these two screws. And we're gonna do the lowbrow customs, AMF. So obviously we don't wanna spend the next 20 minutes 
carving or peeling this off because sometimes Harley uses glue on these. It's not worth your time. Get one of these. We have these on the website. Throttle by wire, one inch, part number 008786. You can see the gear in that one real well because the end's not closed. See the little gear drive that will mesh with this. All right, so I got all three of the wires pulled in there. I was just looking at, wondering how much I didn't pay attention to how much turn signal wire was hanging out. So I kind of looked at it and I looked at the other one. I go, oh, look, there's some kind of a weird little corrosion going on there, something white mark on there. So I looked on this one, I had the same thing. I pulled it through to there. Uh, we, we went ahead and got our grip onto our new throttle tube. Once again, that gear is gonna engage with that and this is gonna be inside there. So let's go ahead and get this side buttoned up. And I'm not going to tighten these down all the way because we might want to change the position of it once we get it on the bike. Okay, so. There's that side. Now. We gotta get the other side in. This side should go real easy because there's only two wires. Facing that way, there we go. Okay. And I also think uh, I've come to the conclusion that it's not that critical about that wire. I think we'll still be able to pull it before we put our uh, master cylinder and brake on there. Okay, got her all the way on there. So let's just go ahead and put the other lid on. There we go. Ready to put them back on. Oh, geez, we need some risers. Hey, we'll put the risers on right after lunch, get these bars back on, run some wires, and keep on rolling. Woo! Okay, I was uh, getting ready to put the risers on, and we're going to use these uh, Lowbrow Custom Solid Riser Bushings. Uh, this is the stock one. You got the rubber baby buggy bumper in the centerpiece. We'll show you how, you know what that looks like. And this is the Lowbrow one. You've got this solid. So if you have taller bars, they're gonna be more rigid. But at any rate, this one takes a socket head like this. So it's nice and clean when it's installed, like it at. So you can't see the bolt, nice, huh? Well, the reason I'm going on about this is we're gonna be using this Biltwell riser. This is, uh, this is called uh, Murdoch Pullback Black 8 inch. That's what we're gonna put on this bike, like a so. Oh, look how that's gonna be nice there on that side. You won't see that all nice and blacked out. Now, anytime I'm putting a new riser on a bike, and new bolts and a new riser, I'm checking the fitment of things. Well, right out of the gate, here's our brand new bolt from Colony, very reputable company. We sell a lot of their fasteners. It's chrome. So, here's our 
new in the box built well immediately as I start treading that in there I go mm, that's really tight I don't think we're gonna be able to get these parts on that bike because it's so tight and I'm not gonna force it and so I think what I'm getting at here is sometimes if something doesn't feel right stop regroup try to figure out why well from experience I already know what's going on here number one you can see I've ran a die over this one and clean the chrome off the threads. So it may be possible that there's just a little bit of extra chrome built up on the threads, no fault of colony. And then I also tapped the threads in here with a half 13 tap and it, notice it was very hard going. So by, re, by removing, running a die over this and running a tap through this hole, then I can take my bolt and oh, would you look at that. It, threads in absolutely perfectly the way it should work and because the other thing is oh look at that it's still going strong no problem whatsoever and so uh, sometimes I get calls from customers and they're having a problem with getting things to work together and sometimes it's just a matter of simply getting your tap and die set out and cleaning up the threads now it's perfect and the other thing worth mentioning is, since this has no place for a lock washer, like on the stock ones, have a lock washer, on the, goes on first, and then the flat washer. Uh, since I don't have a lock washer, I do want to put some Loctite on this. And so that's not a problem to do it this way, but you want to be able to thread this very easily. So. If something's not threading, you bought some chrome fasteners or you bought, I also see there's a little bit of paint in the hole here. I don't know if maybe that's part of it, um, but you want to make sure things are working properly before, because these are a fairly expensive part and you don't want to ruin a part trying to cram a bolt in there because you know it's the same size. Once again, that is not threading by hand like the one I just demonstrated on that side. So we're gonna go, go ahead and get busy with our die over here and the vise for the bolt and our tap in the hole for that one. And then we can proceed with putting the risers on the motorcycle with some red Loctite. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the risers installed. Uh, since we put a bunch of tap fluid on there, we're gonna go ahead and clean it out with some brake clean because we are going to, whoa, Nelly. Come out the other end. That's all right. Uh, we don't want a bunch of oil in there for the Loctite won't work right. Mm, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got our riser bottom pieces, our bolts. We clean this up. Let's put some Loctite on these. And get her started. And look how nice the, the solid riser bushing matches the, all everything's all black now. We don't have these silver, these silver chingas sitting on top there like we had before. Took my torque wrench home. 
we're gonna use this for a little bit more leverage. Click. Don't try this at home. Use your torque wrench. Click. All right. We are ready to put the handlebars on. Woo! But first, we got to take the top cap off. It's just snugged on there for shipping purposes. Well, look out for our television. And uh, good thing the risers we're using here have this cutout on the bottom. Otherwise, the wires wouldn't have any place to go. So Biltwell was thinking about when they designed this one for this application, you got a big slot here because we're gonna need that. And I'm gonna clean this off because it looks like I got some muckety muck on it when I was brake cleaning the uh, tapping fluid off of there. There we go. And I'm going to leave my fasteners here because if you're doing this job by yourself and your wife's not home to hold your handlebars for you, it's kind of, it's not a hard thing, but you got to kind of hold the bar and the clamp and put a fastener in it all at the same time. I think we'll use this to get them started versus that other one that should uh, make it a little easier on us. And we're going to set this down because we got to feed the wires through and let's uh, get the bars on there. Look at me holding them way up in the air. Ha <laughs> ha! This would most certainly be a little easier if you had a helper. Oh goodness gracious, that's a lot of stuff. One more to go. We can straighten those out. Now, you want this to be in the center, and since everything's black, I'm kind of eyeballing it. We don't want to mark stuff up. And now comes the tricky part where we have to hold this and that and everything else all at the same time. And I'm not going to crank anything down too hard because if my bar is not centered, I don't want to mark it up. So I'm just gonna get these two started and I'm gonna stand back and have a look at it. And if I, and I'm not gonna move the bars at all. If they're not right, I'm gonna loosen it back up to move them. And I can plainly see it needs to come this way. So now I'm gonna hold the bar and loosen these back up. Let's try it there and see what it looks like. And we'll get another perspective on it. And you could also kind of look at the slot on the bottom of your bar if you can see it. And that will also help us to determine if we're centered. I can't see it very well, so let's uh, take a look with our handy dandy lowbrow flashlight. And that looks pretty good. 
When you weren't looking, I had the owner of the motorcycle sit on the seat and put the bars where he liked them so that we could put the final whammy and put these last two bolts in. Now, one of the other things I was noticing as I was snugging them down is that because I only had two in, it was pulling the clamp more to one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. And then I'm going to look at the spread on the clamp because obviously if it was all the way together when it was tight, it probably wouldn't hold them. So I can plainly see that I've got a much larger gap on the bottom on this side than the top. So I'm gonna loosen this one and this one and then I'm gonna tighten this down. And so I want that gap to be even, top to bottom and side to side. Since I can't see it so well, I'm gonna hop on over here. Right now it's pretty even. And that looks real good, nice and even, both sides. Go ahead and uh, final tighten the bars with a ratchet. evenly. I don't personally think I'd be using my torque wrench on these because we don't want to stand a chance of pulling the threads out trying to achieve some ridiculous torque spec when we know that we can tighten these by hand like the way I'm doing going back and forth top to bottom and then checking them for tightness. Okay, pretty happy with that. Now, we go ahead and put the switch housings where we, they'll be convenient for the operator. Even though I'm not the operator, you can kind of judge where you like them by where your hands end up when you go to the housing. Beep, beep. So that's pretty good right there. I'm pretty happy with that. So we can go ahead and tighten the switch housings. And I can see now that I think we're doing okay with our turn signals like that. We'll still be able to pull the wire through. So we're not gonna mess with the wires until we get the clutch handle back on and the master cylinder back on. And then we'll go ahead and uh, adjust the wire length that we have. We're gonna go ahead and get our uh, clutch handle back on there. Uh, we don't need to put the lever on just yet. And once again, like I said, so th this job is pretty new to me because I've never taken apart this style control before because I work on mostly vintage bikes anymore. So I can see how that works. And uh, that looks about right. I think we should just run that up there just a little bit more. Well, and that wire goes in that slot and then you've got your clutch safety switch over here. And then there's a things that this engages with and that's that. Oh, don't forget our little flat washers underneath the head of these. And this is another one where you don't need to crank these down till the cows come home. And we're going to put the final whammy to all the fasteners at once. I usually like to get all my controls on, situated, and then I go back over them and do these two, these two, these two, and these two. Lastly, to make sure everything's tight before we go for a ride. And that should be good on the wire length. I'm happy with that. All right, next up, we're going to put some Biltwell mirrors on this motorcycle. And uh, these are the utility mirror that we sell on the website, made by Biltwell. Let's have a little comparison to the stock ones and see how, what the differences are here. Well, al already I can see that the size is very different. Here's your stock mirror. Here's your Biltwell mirror. Wow, that's pretty cool. Not particularly my style, but the guy who rides his bike likes them, so we're going to put them on there. Whoop! Uh, they do come with these screws. 
I think they'd probably work real fine if we didn't have the mirrors hanging off of there. They're just a tad bit too short for that. So what I had to do is I got some different screws to uh, get the mirrors on there. And so once again, we've got a little nubby on here. So we'll go ahead and get that started. We don't really need to locate that until we're gonna tighten it down. So let's get this started. And goodness, there we go. I like T-handles for jobs like this. Aligning the little nubby, whoa, Nelly. And anytime you're replacing a mirror, it's best to sit on the motorcycle before you tighten it down and orientate it so you can see where you're going and then tighten it down. Earlier in the video, we had discussed the possibility of changing the brake line and the clutch cable. Well, I've just discovered that the crazy guy who owns this bike was originally planning on putting 10 inch risers and changed his mind to eight inch. So I just did a trial fit of the master cylinder and it seems like the line's gonna be long enough so it's gonna save us a lot of time, energy, and work to have to change it out because this bike does have ABS. So let's go ahead and put the master cylinder back on. And let's not forget to tighten the banjo bolt that we loosened, but I'm probably gonna reposition the brake line a little bit once we get it up here and then we can go ahead and get our other mirror on there and keep moving forward with our little project here. Like I said, I trial, I checked this before I started talking to make sure it was gonna be long enough. And it seems like it's okay. Oh, there she is. You have to line up this little nubby thing there. And actually, if we roll it down this way, it'll be easier to get things started. I know this is a kind of a fiddly job by yourself so if your wife is handy, just tell her to come over here and hold that sucker up for you while you get this up there with your other hand and then hold it with your thumb and then get a fastener with your other hand and get her started and make sure you have your fasteners and your tool ready to rock over here. And I think I may have also mentioned about this weird large gap there and realized that's because the other bars were larger diameter there and that's why. I guess technically you could get a set of uh, clamps from an earlier bike and it wouldn't look that way, but this is what we have to work with here, so. And on some, I've noticed on some of the earlier bikes that have a metal to rubber line, sometimes you can uh, kind of tweak the metal and straighten or bend it differently to gain some brake line, but I'm okay with that. I think that'll be fine. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put this mirror on after we snug that down, and then we'll check the clutch cable and verify that the length on that's gonna be good for this application. Once again, we we're gonna do 10, we're doing eight. All right, so we went ahead and put the other mirror on. We're still not gonna tighten down the controls until we get the clutch cable on there. And uh, we put the stock cable, clutch cable back on loosely and we've determined that it's just not gonna be long enough. I can plainly see that that's just not gonna cut it because the brake line worked out okay because it's attached to the forks and will turn with the fork. The clutch cable needs to have some slack for when you're turning the bar lock to lock or you know riding down the road. So I just wasn't happy with the amount of cable left there, even though that would have been nice if we would have been able to reuse it. What we did was we routed the new cable that we got in the same location as the old cable, and I can see that that's gonna be just the right length, so we're gonna go ahead and change out the clutch cable. So, and this is how it goes when you're changing handlebars. You can't always anticipate everything that's going to occur, and, and once again, I'm gonna reiterate, a lot of times it is much easier to put the bars on the bike first and then do some measuring or 
check what you have and go, oh, gee, that's going to work greater. No, it's not, and I need to order some more stuff. It, it's just kind of difficult to anticipate what you're going to need for every situation. And, unless, of course, you are doing a specific bar where there is a kit that is designed for that bar. So let's get started taking the clutch cable off of here. This is our old one. We've already got it de-adjusted. We're gonna have to take the uh, side cover off the transmission. So the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to drain the tranny fluid because when we take the side cover off, it'll just leak all over the place and that wouldn't be any good. So I think we'll jack up We'll go ahead and jack up the lift so we can get underneath there to drain that out and start working on getting that cover off. And the next thing that's going to happen is I'm, I can't really remember how long those bottom screws are. So uh, we have these one, two, three, four, five, six screws to take this cover off. I'm not real sure if those bottom ones are going to come out without moving the exhaust out of the way. So we're going to try that and see what happens after we get the fluid drained out. Okay, we're going to drain the tranny fluid. Now, be aware that there's two different drain plugs under here. The one that faces down that's right over here is going to be the transmission. The one that faces towards me is going to be your engine oil. Don't drain your engine oil if you're trying to drain your tranny. I know, it's a pain in the butt, but that's how they did it. And it's kind of hard, you can't even get your silly pan under there until you get the darn thing loosened, because look where the wrench is. So generally what I do is get it nice and loose like this, till the point where it's about ready to fall out, and then slide your pan under there. Ah, you can't see me anymore, can you? Oh, no, you can. Then slide your pan under there, and then stick your hand in between the pan, and the... it's just a really a fun job. Tranny fluid, smelly stuff depending on what we got in this thing. And there we go. Oh, that's regular old Harley. Okay. And there she goes. So now we'll give her a few minutes to drain and we'll get started on taking the cover off. All right, let's go ahead and get these screws out of this cover. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, break this free before I take the last one out because it'll be easier with it connected than disconnected. That's tight. Why is it so tight? Okay, let's take the last two out here and see if we're going to get lucky. Oh, we're going to have plenty of room for those to come out without taking the silly pipe off. No problemo. They are longer than the top ones, though. And they are the same length as the end ones. So don't be putting the end one or the bottom one in the top because that won't work. And you got, once again, you got to remember. I haven't been working at a, at a dealership for a very long time, so sometimes I forget things. That, that and I'm getting old, you know. Well, I'm not that old, but, you know. Okay, there's all our screws. And there she goes, puking oil already. Look at her go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the ball and ramp off because the way this is designed, you can't get the cable off without taking this off. So now we're gonna need our big snap ring pliers. And let's get another towel on the scene here.
There she goes. This is here's your clutch release. You got some loose balls in there. <laughs> so then you're just gonna flip that over. You're gonna turn this like so. And then this end's gonna come out of here. Like that. And you're gonna take that piece off. And then we're just gonna leave all this stuff hanging around here until we get the new cable on. And a lot of times what I'll do when we go back together is I'll put a dab of grease on those before so they don't wanna fall out like they just did. Well, let's just take the whole damn thing out of there so we don't have ball bearings falling on the floor and such while we're gonna spin the cover around. Because I found it's much easier to spin the cover around than it is to try to turn the cable with a wrench. Turn, 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 watch, we'll do it. See how it's actually easier to turn the cover than it is the cable. And we'll do the same thing when we go back together. Now, there she is, she's off. Look, there's an O-ring. Usually it's on there. It's stuck on here. Be careful that you have your O-ring or this will leak. And the other thing to mention right about now, seems to me lately, I've been having a lot of customers that are changing clutch cables. Most of the time I think it's been on a Sportster where they call or email and they say, this new clutch cable just broke when I was installing it. Well, the reason that happens is because this has threads, but it's hollow for the cable. So you don't need to crank it down like you're trying to torque something. You just need to tighten it down so that it seals. And that's why they're breaking because they're being over tightened. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and pull the old cable out. And what's really cool is since we already routed the new one, it's right there. So let's get the old cable out of the way. There she is, there she is. We'll save this for posterity, it's still a good cable. Who knows when someone might need a clutch cable for a Dyna. You never know. We're gonna put that O-ring on the new cable just like a that. Where did our new O-ring go? Here she is. Let's get that, get that on there now before we forget. And since this is already routed in here, I'm not gonna take it back off to lube it, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna lube it from the top to the bottom. We're ready to put the cover back on. Now see how much easier that is than trying to turn the silly cable. Okay, let's go ahead and put our ball and ramp back together. A little dab will do you. Make sure all three of your balls are there. <laughs> let's go ahead and put that in there like that. And then we're gonna Hook our cable on to this, like so. We're gonna put this in here, like that. We're gonna flip it over, like so. And just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our snap ring back on. Oh, Nelly. We're half in the half in the groove. There she goes. We don't have a new gasket. We should have a new one, but we don't. 
So I am gonna reuse this one. It does have metal in it. I have done this before. It will work, it will be okay. But if you can get your hands on a new one, by all means, put a new gasket on. You wanna hold it up there while you get your screws going because you don't want the gasket to fall off the little... Oh, we're just doing what I said not to do. Don't put the long screws in the top holes. So we got the ball end on there, not the freaking regular one. That's okay, we'll get one snug down and then we'll switch her around. Well, heck, while we got this going, we'll just go ahead and put these in there. These probably have an inch pound torque spec, so we're gonna use our calibrated elbow. Don't be surprised on your model if you got to take the exhaust off to get to that cover. We got lucky on that one. Double check these. Oh yeah. I think I got it just right the first time around. I can tell by the feel of her. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna tighten the cable down now before we attach it or it won't spin. And it looks like this one has a different size than the stock one. Well, the thing's fighting me now. Once again, don't overdo it. Hollow threads, they will break. And then you'll be like, shoot, now I gotta take this back apart. Then I gotta call and get a new cable. Okay, we're ready to lube up the cable and reattach it to the top and get her adjusted. Awesome. And this is where we're gonna fill the tranny back up. So let's take that out now so we don't forget that we don't have any fluid in our tranny. There's our tranny dipstick. We'll leave that out until we get her filled up so we know she's empty. Here's my funnel, my lowbrow funnel. And oh, would you look at that? It's just right for this job. Awesome, things are looking up. Pan Am, use it, use it in your bike. We sell it on the website. Looked up the capacity. She said it was one whole quart. So we're gonna dump the whole thing in here. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I put the drain plug back in. Because if you don't, right about now, you'll see like a giant puddle of oil forming on the lift. Sucks, it's a pain in the butt. And you don't wanna to forget to fill it up because the transmission will be very unhappy with you shortly thereafter. This is 80-90. Transmission oil for big twins. Big twin transmission. Tell you what, this goes a lot faster than I used to use a lot of Bell Ray 85140. It takes a while for it to go in there because it's a little thicker. This will be just fine. Trying to get our money's worth. Okay, there we go. Just for your knowledge, the dips, the tranny plug does have a dipstick 
It's got a full and an add mark. Uh, we can just check it just for the hell of it since we just filled it just because I did put the entire cord in there. Uh, you got to realize that there's some oil clinging to the gears. But look at the level. It's absolutely perfect right on the full mark. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I just stuck it in. I didn't thread it all the way in because that's not how a dipstick works. We're going to put our dipstick back in. Another one that doesn't need to be over tightened. It has an O-ring. Done. Tight. It's good. Okay. Now we're going to move on to lubing the cable. Bike down. Here's what I have available in the lowbrow workshop today. It doesn't really matter what you use to lube your cable. Cable lube's ideal. If you don't have cable lube, you can use whatever you have hanging around, but just be sure to lube the darn thing because they do not come pre-lubed. And so this stuff looks pretty good, but I'm gonna just, and I've got a rag here because basically I'm letting it run down the cable. And so I just keep doing it and letting it run down because if they were smart, they would have made a nozzle that you could stuff down in here. There's this other product that I used to use when I worked at the shop. I don't think they make it anymore. It's called dry slide. And what it was is it had a very small metal spout that you could shove down in between the cable and the housing and pump, 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 lube, lube, lube. So with this one, I'm just going to continually keep spraying it and you'll see how it like I'll, quite a bit of it's going on the, on the paper towel, but quite a bit of it, I could see it go down. There it goes, it's going down now. And as soon as that, hmm, smells good too. And as soon as that goes down, then I'll spray some more. And I'm gonna do this repeatedly because that's probably not enough. We gotta go all the way down the whole cable to the transmission housing. So there it goes, I can see it going down. Oh, down, down, down she goes. There she goes. And when I was doing a service on a man's motorcycle, a lot of times if his cable was very stiff, I would take it off. Like I would just dis, uh, dis, disadjust it, take it off and kind of hang it up like this. And I'd put my, just go during the course of the service. I'd just go by lube it. I'd do some other jobs. I'd put some air in the tires. I'd change the oil and then I'd lube it some more. And then I'd do some more jobs and I'd lube it some more. So by the end of my service, I was pretty confident that the cable had just a, a good amount of lube. If you've got an older bike and you haven't lubed your cables in a while, you will definitely notice the difference in the way your clutch operates when you lube your cable. New or old, lube your cables. Now we'll go ahead and grab our lever and our end. Real simple operation here. Lever on, plastic chinga in. You're gonna slide it from this side through and hook the cable into the other side, like so. We will worry about the cable routing once we get the pin and everything connected. You're just gonna go ahead and get your pin in there. And then you've got this clip that you're gonna need your snap ring pliers for again, the small ones this time. There they are. Don't forget to put your clip on. And she was a little bent out of shape, but I straightened it up. It'll be okay. There she goes. Like a so. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take out the free play in the cable. Okay, so go ahead and uh, start turning your adjuster downwards. The bottom nut is making the cable go into adjustment. And another way you can do this is you can pull your lever like that so that it's completely slack. And then you can adjust this 
and you'll watch to see it move. And you can just keep doing this until it meets that and then you're going to check your free play. And you can see that she's almost sucked all the way up to the... And there she is. Now we'll go ahead and give her a check. And the best way to check the free play is to grab the cable in this hand, the lever in this hand, and there's your free play. See it? And that's pretty good right there. Maybe just a little bit more. Once you've got your free play up there, you're going to lock this down. So these two will get locked together. If you run it up that way, it's not going to do a darn thing. And it looks to me like this cable has two of the same size nuts on it, where a Harley cable is going to have two different ones. So we're going to grab another wrench. So once you get your adjustment set, you're going to lock this nut to that nut, like so. Done. Now your adjustment can't change. Okay, got clutch cable changed. Let's go ahead and try it over here and see how it looks. I almost think it's gonna be better off going across there that way because it forms a better loop there than it will be back here. It's kind of binding up, kind of binding. So uh, we'll just leave it there for now. And, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get all these wires plugged back in and shoved back in the frame. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get the wires plugged back in. Should be pretty self-explanatory. We got two going to this coming from this switch housing. They're gonna to go to the plugs on this side of the bike. And then we have these three are gonna to go to this side. They are coded, color coded. I know from experience that purple, blue, and black are gonna be this, a turn signal, running light, and ground. So that's gonna be a super easy one. Here it is right here, not a problem. These plug in very easily. When you plug them back in, it's a good idea to pull on it after if you don't hear it click or it goes in real smooth like this one just did, give it a pull. If it pulls back out, that's not connected good. Okay, so there's that one. Now we've got this one. That's gonna be the rest of the switches. And it's going to go to this plug. Oh, other way around. You can't even plug these in backwards. They won't work. There's that one. And then we have this one. Not quite sure. These have all got to be the switches. I'll see. I could hear that one click. That one's all good. So there's those. All good. Once again, turn signal, running light, and see how see how those match up. You can see the two little nubbies there and the two slot there. You, if you try to go that way, hmm, won't even go in. No. Nope. See it clicked in. Give it a pull. No problem. Plugged in. Here's the rest of the switches for this side. Here it click give it a pull, and then the last one here. And this one has a little bit different plug, but also, there it is, this is not being used. Okay, now we're gonna stuff all these connectors back in the holes on the side of this frame and push them down through into the backbone. We're not gonna bore you with the details on that, just get her done. Okay, we got our wires all tucked up into our frame, and I have to tell you, it wasn't easy. We ended up having to take the gas tank off. On this model year, there's actually a little plastic door on the bottom of the frame. It's kind of hard to see. You're not going to be able to see it in this video, but if you look at a picture on the, on the Google, you'll find out what it looks like. And on the earlier model Dynas, you had to basically take a little plastic trap door off that was in uh, towards the front of the back fender. Towards the bottom was a little door, and you could pull the door off, and the wires that go through that square, big giant square backbone ended up up here. Whatever you got to do to get them wires back in that frame, once you do get them back in there, before you button everything up, it's a, a really good idea to double check all the operation of all your switches. We've done that. Everything's working great. I had the owner of this motorcycle sit on the seat. We positioned the levers, the controls, the mirrors where he liked them for riding. It's always a good idea to sit on your seat and have a look at where things are as far as where the controls are. And obviously double check that all your controls are tightened down before you go for a ride. On a fly-by-wire, if this isn't tight, it's possible that this can pop off the end of that little gear drive chinga in there. And uh, the only other thing we have left to do here is Mikey's gonna 
put a fairing on here so we don't have the fender. Or the defender got put back on, sorry, but he's gonna put a fairing on here so we didn't do that job for the video because it's not part of this video. But at any rate, that's why there's no headlight on there. But other than that, we got her all wrapped up. Uh, you see it's not so difficult to change bars uh, with a little pre-planning as far as knowing if you're going to need a new cable or if you're going to make the wires longer. Uh, really goes a long way so you don't have your bike sitting on the lift in your garage or sitting on your stand or whatever you have in your garage sitting on the side stand with it all half taken apart and now you have to wait for something else to come in the mail. All right, so that's a wrap on the Dyna handlebar swap out. If you have any questions on this video or any of our other videos or any of our parts or anything at all, you can reach out to us. You can give me a call on my telephone. You can send me an email. You can tweet. You can text. You can hit us up on Facebook, whatever you want to do. And head on over to lowbrowcustoms.com and get you some parts and go for a ride. Woo!